Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation. Well, this problem has a little bit of history because about three years ago, I made a video with no sound. And here's the problem. Log x with base 5 equals the square root of 1 minus x squared. Well, actually, this video published on July 23rd, 2021. So I just couldn't wait until July 23rd this year. I could make it on the third year mark exactly. But anyways, here we are. That's the problem. If you're curious about what that looks like, it's probably the only problem that I made with no sound. I was just testing out something. Anyways, you can go ahead and watch it. But we'll get back to this and make some connections to our problem with the exponential version. 5 to the power square root of 1 minus x squared equals x, and we're going to be solving for x values. So basically, the original problem can be obtained by logging both sides with base 5. If we do that, we get something like this. And obviously, this can be moved to the front, properties of logarithms. And this gives us the problem from roughly three years ago. In other words, today, in this video, I wanted to exponentialize that problem. Not exponentiate, exponentialize. Anyways, that's a new word. Hopefully, that's going to show up in dictionaries one day. Maybe Monday. So, we have this problem. And we're going to be looking at it from two different angles. Let's go ahead and take a look at it logarithmically first. And I'll be showing you two graphs at the end. Okay, so first of all, if we have this equation, the square root of 1 minus x squared equals log x with base 5, we kind of need to think about the domain. With exponential functions and equations, we don't have to worry about it that much because they are kind of like uh, different. <laughs> Anyways, I just couldn't find a good reason for that, but you get the idea. But in this case, we have actually, never mind, it had a radical anyway, so we need, to have, we need to think about it. So we have the square root of 1 minus x squared. That tells us that, hey, whatever is inside the radical needs to be greater than or equal to 0. In other words, x needs to be between negative 1 and positive 1, inclusive, right? And of course, because of this, x needs to be positive. So if you go ahead and find a common domain for these functions, you're going to get something like this. X needs to be between 0 and 1, where 1 is included, but 0 isn't, because log 0 is undefined in any domain, even in the complex world, right? So, here's what we're going to do. First of all, if X is, we have, kind of have to think about something here. If X is less than or equal to 1, obviously it's positive, we know that, right? Then, log X with base 5, of course, is going to be less than or equal to 0. Why? Because log 1 is 0. If you think about the graph of log, and I'm going to show you a nicer graph. This is just a rough sketch. But notice that at 1 we have a 0. Anything less than or equal to 1 is going to give us a negative output. Make sense? So, this is the result. Of course, we have equality because x could be 1. All right? But here's the thing. If x is less than or equal to 1, which is basically in our domain, then log is less than or equal to 0, but it's equal to the square root of something. But we do know that square root of 1 minus x squared is always greater than or equal to 0, right? It's always true, obviously, for certain values of x, but this is always true regardless. So, how can one side of an equation be less than or equal to 0, the other side be greater than or equal to 0? Which means they have to be 0 at the same time. Make sense? In other words, we get the following system of equations which is kind of interesting because we, from an equation we get a system. That's kind of funny, right? So now both of these have to be true, and this just implies that x is equal to 1. But what does that mean graphically? We'll definitely take a look at it. Okay, when we look at the graph, I'm, I'll probably remind you one more time what we were talking about, if I can remember that, of course, and then we'll kind of make it more detailed. But that's basically the logarithmic method or the logarithmic approach, which kind of uh, refers to the problem from July 23rd, 2021. That was a while ago, right? That was around the time I started this channel a long, long time ago. And some of you guys have been sticking around since then. Thank you very much for your support and keep up the good work. So let's go ahead and take a look at it from 
an exponential perspective. So our exponential equation, which is the original, is this. So the exponentialized form. 5 to the power square root of 1 minus x squared equals x, right? So right-hand side is pretty simple. What about the left? Uh, it's a little complicated. And think about what the graph of this function is going to look like without using Desmos or any other graphing calculator. Try to graph it. Try to play with the domain and, you know, set some x, y-intercepts, whatever you can find, and then try to visualize. This is very, very helpful. In algebra, we should be able to sketch the graph of a function pretty quickly. That's just going to give you a better, better understanding. Anyways. So, let's go ahead and set f of x equal to 5 to the power square root of 1 minus x squared. Then we're going to go ahead and differentiate this, because why not, right? That's a good reason, isn't it? So now, how do you differentiate a to the power some function, right? The derivative of something like this is, you write the original one, and then by the chain rule, you differentiate the inside, which is the exponent in this case, and then multiply by the natural log of the base, which kind of corrects it. It's a correcting factor because if a is e, Euler's number, then you don't need that part. Make sense? But we do need to multiply by ln a if a is different from e. So this becomes 5 to the power, the same thing, times the derivative of uh, square root of 1 minus x squared, which is negative 2x, divided by 2 times uh, the square root of 1 minus x squared. And again, in this case, we are talking about the square root of u differentiated, which is u prime divided by 2 root u. So it's a couple of things, uh, not a couple of things, thousands of things, right? You have to memorize if you're doing calculus. Anyways, that's the formula times ln 5. And of course, in most cases, when we differentiate, we do set it equal to 0 because our goal is to find critical points. And where the derivative is equal to 0, most of the time we do get a horizontal tangent, which indicates maxima and minima. If you set this equal to 0, Obviously, in the real world, and even in the complex world, this can't be 0. ln 5 is not 0. So the only thing that can be 0 is this one, and that means x equals 0. So at 0, we have a critical point, but we're going to find the y coordinate, or the, what is it called, abscissa and the ordinate, something like that, anyways, uh, by substituting x equals 0 into the function. But let's go ahead and make a quick table. I like tables. And... This is going to give us actually a really good idea of our, how our function behaves. So I'm going to have x, f prime, and f in my table, and the critical point value x at 0. And of course, 0 makes the derivative 0, so I'm going to put a little 0 there, which indicates that the sign is supposed to change. Sometimes we have double roots, so some, sometimes you have a factor of x squared and set equal to 0. Actually, the sign is not going to change at that point, or it's going to change twice. Okay, so to the right of 0, if you look at the derivative, you're going to realize because we have a minus x and the bottom is radical, so it's going to be positive for sure or non-negative, and then the only thing that changes is x. If x is greater than 0, the derivative is going to be negative, otherwise it's positive, which indicates our function is increasing on that interval and decreasing on the other interval. And of course, intervals are here, negative infinity to 0 and 0 to infinity. We have two intervals. What does that mean? It just means that we have a max at 0. We already knew that was a critical point, but now we have a max at 0, 5. If you plug in 0, you're going to get 5 from the function. And now if you check f of 1 equals 1, why did we check f at 1 though, right? That's a good question. Here's the thing. Those are going to be the endpoints. You know why? Because remember, our x values were supposed to be on this interval, and we said that, okay, it's going to be from negative 1 to 1. Be careful about that. So we're only checking those points, and if you check those points, you're going to realize that we get 1. These are the endpoints, and you know what that means. Suppose g of x is equal to x, g of 1 is also 1, which means f of 1 equals g of 1, and yay, we have a solution. Let's go ahead and look at the graphs, and then we will verify those results. First of all, the graph of 5 to the power square root of 1 minus x squared along with y equals x. And they intersect at a single point, which is 1, 1, so x equals 1 from here. And notice that our exponential function is only going to be between negative 1 and 1. That's what I meant by those values. And with the logarithmic version, which is square root of 1 minus x squared equals log x with base 5. 
here's a semicircle, which is this, and here's the log function. And again, they intersect at a single point because uh, for certain reasons, right? <laughs> Obviously. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.